Got you a bunch of videos for exam question walkthroughs and the topic for this one is alkanes and haloalkanes. The reason I've lumped these two together is because you don't really get many questions on a paper just about alkanes or just about haloalkanes, whereas you can link them both together uh, with the halogenation reaction of the alkanes. So that, that's my justification there. Okay, so this is the first one and as always the link to the questions in the description of the video if you want to try them first. Okay, so the first question, which equation shows a propagation step for this reaction? So is it A? No, because that's an initiation reaction. Is it B? No, because that is a termination step. So that leaves us with C and D, and they both look at first glance like propagation steps because you've got one radical on the left-hand side and you've got a different radical on the right hand side but which is the right one for this reaction well it's actually D because when a halogen radical reacts with a haloalkane it takes a hydrogen off and makes HCl moving on to question 2 so I'll just quickly explain what this is all about and then we'll get into the question so the thickness of this line is basically trying to represent the bond enthalpy, the strength of the bond between the atoms. So you can see the CF bond is the strongest, the CI bond is the weakest, and the size of the delta plus delta minus shows the relative size of the dipole. So this bond is the strongest, it's also got the biggest dipole across it. So what's the key factor in the hydrolysis reaction that sort of dictates the rate of the reaction? It's the bond enthalpy. So the weakest bond has the fastest rate because it breaks really easily. So that means the answer to two is D. Moving on to question three. So how are we going to tackle this? Well, if you think about every mole of carbon in the hydrocarbon is going to produce a mole of CO2 when it's completely combusted. So that means 0.4 moles of C2H6 will make twice as many moles of CO2 and there's the others, so you can see that B creates the largest moles of CO2, so therefore that'll have the greatest volume. Moving on to the next one, so how many structural isomers have the molecular formula C5H12? So the obvious starting one is a chain of five, one, two, three, four, five, so that's pentane. Then if we drop the main chain down to four, and then put a methyl group either on that one or that one, because they're the same thing. So there's no more with the main chain of four, so let's drop the main chain down to three. So put two methyl groups on there. Now sometimes some of my students would say main chain of three and then an ethyl group. The problem with that is one, two, three, four. That's your longest chain now with a methyl on two. So they're actually the same. So the answer was three. So B. Moving on to number five. So the thing we've got to appreciate is the molecular formula for these things is all C8H18. So we can't base it on the number of electrons in the molecules. So these are all structural isomers essentially. So what's it going to be down to? It's down to the degree of branching. So the one with the most branching is going to have the lowest boiling point. It's got the weakest induced dipole forces between its molecules. So A with those three numbers there it's got the most branching, so that's your answer. So moving on to number six now, so I've just drawn up a generic equation for the hydrolyses of these two halogenoalkanes. X just represents the halogen. So you can see that we've got um, a halide ion in solution at the end of the reaction. So we need a chemical that can detect that, and the answer is silver nitrate. So aqueous silver nitrate will be used, so the answer is B. Moving on to number seven, so there's a couple of ways you can tackle this. You can actually physically count up how many hydrogens you can have on each of those carbons. Just remember that each carbon can make four bonds, so you can see these two are gonna have three hydrogens because there's one bond shown in the skeletal formula. These two can have one hydrogen because there's three bonds shown, and these can have two. So that gives you C7H14, so that is the answer. I'll just show you another way to tackle it. So we know that the general formula of an alkane, a regular alkane, is CNH2N plus 2. 
If you put a ring into the alkane and make it a cyclic alkane, you have to knock two hydrogens off. So it then just becomes CnH2n. So obviously if there's seven carbons, you've got 14 hydrogens. It's probably worth mentioning here, as you increase the number of rings, so if you went up to two rings, you'd have to go CnH2n minus two. If you went to three rings, uh, 2n minus four, and so on. So every ring, you have to take two hydrogens out. And finally for question eight, why don't we have a quick look at the mechanism for the reaction of ethane with chlorine to make chloroethane. So the initiation step, you could take your chlorine molecule, apply UV and you get your two chlorine radicals. Your first propagation step, so you take your chlorine radical, that's going to take a hydrogen off from HCl, like we said at the start of this, and that's going to leave that radical there. And then propagation two, this new radical reacts with Cl2 molecule and you get C2H5Cl and you reform a chlorine radical. And then obviously the termination steps are just combination of any two radicals. So which radicals are present? Well, we've definitely got that one there, the Cl radical, and we've got that one there. So it was two and three only, so it was option C.